China's gaming giants lost $80 billion overnight. Sony was right about Game Pass. And GTA 5 source code just leaked, which means GTA on PC is officially cooked. Let's get into the hot news gaming, everybody. It is Wednesday, December 27th, 2023, and we're gonna start off today talking about how Tencent and NetEase lost $80 billion, causing rule reevaluations. Gotcha games have been the moneymaker for Chinese game studios, with the likes of Hoyo versus Genshin Impact leading the charge, but that may be about to change. China's new rules essentially ban games from rewarding players for first time logins, logging in every day, or buying items for the first time. The move wiped out $80 billion in market cap, basically overnight from China's two largest game companies, Tencent and NetEase, with the former losing $54 billion alone. That's about 16% of the company's market value. These new rules would continue the country's war against gaming addiction. Chinese state media at one point called gaming spiritual opium, referring to the struggles China had and continues to have with opioid addiction. Just using this wording resulted in $60 billion lost in market cap for Tencent in 2021. But it may not be long before Tencent sees some of that money back since Chinese officials are already considering reevaluating the proposed new rules. We're not quite sure how existing or in development games will have to change to conform to the rules if they stick out, but we'll keep an eye out for more info if any becomes available. But what is widely available, thanks to Game Pass, is Starfield, Ooh. which has not not had the fan reception Xbox has been hoping for. Because it was trash! Oh. People who got Starfield in their stockings for Christmas this year didn't appear too happy with what they got, as the game's Steam ranking officially hit a new low. Man, it took this long? It's like pretty low. Looking at the page now shows that Starfield's recent ranking is mostly negative with an overall mixed status. Most of the negative reviews say that the game is boring, slow to start, and the quality of writing in the stories and characters is... Bad. bad. This doesn't surprise me because the people who would buy it on Steam initially were probably Bethesda diehards and the average person was playing it on Game Pass where you get it for free. Mm -hmm. And now that it's the holiday season, more of the regular people are being gifted this game and then finding out. The regular Oops. people as opposed to Xbox owners. Correct. But another big reason, according to r slash Starfield, is that Cyberpunk and Baldur's Gate are ruining the experience for players. Oh, the game's too good! The top thread in this topic cites how bad Starfield's NPC dialogue is compared to the other two, which only is fair. If only they used AI. If only. <laughs> With one other user saying, Baldur's Gate 3 and Cyberpunk showed us what is possible. Starfield showed us what not to do. Another said, every time I would start a dialogue with an NPC, I couldn't help but think it doesn't have to be this way. It could be so much more. Imagine if if, if Larian made Starfield. It would be good. Mm -hmm. Much of the thread highlights many of the same talking points made in the Steam reviews, but the most damning comment might be this one saying, I feel like I'm not very excited for The Elder Scrolls 6 anymore. Welcome, welcome <laughs> aboard. I haven't been excited ever. Bethesda has said that it plans to introduce new ways to travel among other updates for Starfield 2024, but it may be a little too late for anything official to save its reputation. Modders, the ball is in your court. You know, I'm gonna disagree with you on that. <gasps> People got over Cyberpunk really fast. Like as soon as Phantom Liberty and 2.0 dropped, they, they're they winning game awards, everybody's forgiving them, it's fine. I mean, it took but two years? Two, three years, yeah. So it's Starfield in 2026. Also, I feel like a year after Cyberpunk came out, people were pretty much okay No, the with problem the was people were playing it on PlayStation 4. Yeah, everybody on PS4 stopped. Yeah. They gave up. Uh-huh. Mods, though, have produced some of the best content for Bethesda games over the years, and this trend looks to continue for Fallout London, which has finally gotten a release date. If you're unfamiliar with Fallout London, it's described as a game-sized DLC mod that adds the city of London, London as a totally new playable area. The team behind the mod posted an announcement on Twitter and an accompanying video on YouTube saying it wouldn't meet its previous 2023 release window, which we only got four days, you know. Instead, the mod now has an expected release date of April 23rd, 2024. The new date is intentional as it will be out two weeks after the upcoming Fallout TV show's release on April 12th. Hopefully the show's good. The delay is due to a large number of team members residing in an area with ongoing conflict, which is likely referring to the ongoing Russian invasion of Ukraine. The mod team says the delay will afford them more time to polish and test everything after retraining and reassigning team members in affected areas of development. It wouldn't be the first time a game project was affected by the war in Ukraine, as many of the teams behind Stalker 2's development have also been affected. Hopefully, the team can reach their goals because Fallout London could be something special. The new video claims that the mod has more quests than the base Fallout 4, more 
more dialogue lines than Fallout New Vegas and Skyrim, and a larger play area than the base game and Far Harbor DLC combined. Not only that, but the mod will also overhaul the UI, perk system, and dialogue with even more additions entirely new to the game. Who knows, this might be the thing that finally makes me play Fallout 4. Not really. I'm not going to play it. I'm not going to do it. Why it's, is the game engine tied to, to the refresh rate? It's too much. Please don't make me do it. Mm. Well, it looks like Sony wasn't making things up about how financially stupid it is for them to throw new first party titles on PlayStation Plus at release. A leaked presentation due to the Insomniac hacks last Insomniac week. Insomniac hacks. Last week has shown what appears to be proof that putting a game on PlayStation Plus actively kills its potential sales. Ack, ack. Who to thunk? The example in the slide shows that Horizon Forbidden West is projected to sell less than the previous title in the series, Horizon Zero Dawn. Can't be because it's worse. <laughs> Even though there was a significant jump in game activations after putting the game on PlayStation Plus a year after its release, Sony says that the game sales are flatlined because of the move. Microsoft has repeatedly said that Sony should consider releasing first party games on its subscription service while Sony has long rallied against this sentiment. Gamers want this to be the case since it means less overall money to spend, but it would financially ruin Sony. How could they have less billions? Like those signs on the side of the road? Keep going. Microsoft can have its gaming division operate at a loss since it has more revenue streams that help to keep the company in the black. Like all of that money you're spending on Windows activations. Sony, on the other hand, can't afford for PlayStation games to suck. And it would be far worse to have a game be a dud and appear on the subscription service from day one. More like the day before, am I right? That's not even factoring in the sheer amount of money needed to develop modern games. Just imagine how long it would take for Insomniac to break even on Spider-Man 2's reported $300 million budget if it was released on PlayStation Plus, we would never see Wolverine, even though we already have. And you could forget <laughs> about Spider-Man 3. My turn! Oh, oh, sorry, sorry. Sony may be right about its stance on PlayStation Plus, but the jury is still out about the new rumor of a remaster of the God of War trilogy being in the works. You're this, gonna play that. I'm not, actually. I don't Whoa. really care about that. This rumor comes from the Xbox era podcast Nick Baker, who claims that a remaster might be happening. It was riveting news. It sounds like <laughs> But lacks anything corroborating the info. He's unsure whether Sony Santa Monica or another studio like Bluepoint is working on the remaster, It's if it's a rizzed up port of the God of War saga from PS3, or if it would be more of a remake. All we know is that according to Baker, something related to the original God of War games is possibly in the works. But let's just assume that the trilogy is getting remastered. Given how Kratos is now and how he recounts his past actions in the new Valhalla DLC, which is fantastic, by the way. I enjoyed every single moment of that on my PlayStation portal. You Sony shill. This would be the perfect time for people who jumped in with God of War on PS4. Plus, if it's more of a remake, we could get all of those incredible set piece openings remade or even new content we've never seen. I mean, if Square Enix can completely reimagine Final Fantasy VII, then why can't Sony? I would play a classic God of War game if it had the new mechanics. Yes, but also like, there's not a whole lot about the original story that entices me. Like, I really don't vibe with the, I'm enraged and need to get revenge. Yeah, but if they like- If they recontextualize yeah. it. Yeah. That'd be great. That would be, I would be very interested to see a recontextualization. I don't want a remaster, they already remastered it. I don't want to remaster. It's just going to look like crap still. <laughs> <laughs> the Xbox era podcast also gave us an idea of when to expect Arcane's newly announced Blade game. Ooh, all right. According to Jeff Grubb, we could expect to play Blade on the oh so near future of 2027. How do you go back to the future? They did it in the 80s. You know, three years after it was announced at this year's Game Awards. Todd Howard. Did I do that? Would be proud. AAA game development usually takes three to five years or longer. Since Deathloop came out in late 2021, we could wait until 2028 before the game releases. We might know that Sony and Microsoft might have new console hardware that maybe, maybe, or may, maybe. May, may not come out by then. So we might be playing this on a PlayStation 6 or the Xbox Prism, you know? Let's just hope it's not another Redfall situation. <laughs> Redfall, you mean when you trust the devs who you trusted before and then they come out with something that's absolutely trash? Good thing Gollum and Kong came out because otherwise Redfall would have been the abomination of 2023. But the success of the Five Nights at Freddy's movie has seemingly greenlit a new age of video game horror adaptations as the creator of Bendy and the Ink Machine has announced their own movie adaptation. There's not too much info beyond the official games and the creator's Twitter posts, but we know it's in development at Radar Pictures, responsible for The Rock's Jumanji reboot, Woo! The Last Samurai, and the first two Bill and Ted films. Interesting, okay. 
<laughs> It'll be interesting to see how this one will go, given the strong debut of the FNAF franchise. This reignited my love of Josh Hutcherson. You stopped. And it may be almost 2024, but 2023 got one more major hack left in it. Uh -oh. a lot of <laughs> Josh Hutcherson. Got him! Oh, Peter. The source code to GTA 5 is now floating around. Jokes aside, if this is all true, this could be catastrophic for Rockstar. We've heard rumors that the source code to GTA 5 was reportedly leaked last year, but reports now suggest that the source code is available online to download. Oh, like RAM. Yes. We are still waiting for confirmation of the leak, but several things can happen if the code is in the wild. First, developers can see how the game was made, copy game mechanics or systems, or even create derivative works from code. Oh, like the shark cards. Second, bad actors with the code could exploit any vulnerabilities in online multiplayer, making GTA Online even more problematic for players dealing with rampant hacking. But the worst thing this can do is set back the development of GTA 6 for years. Four years? F-O-R years. That makes more sense. If the source code in GTA 5 is at all similar to GTA 6's, Rockstar needs to make a significant effort to recode it and remove the vulnerabilities. How about you don't make a game that's vulnerable? The company would also need to spend unfathomable amounts of money to take the leak down, which- I could fathom. As of this recording, has yet to be confirmed by Rockstar. I hope this is just a baseless rumor because there have been way too many large scale hacks and leaks this year. Outro. <laughs> Hosts can sign off however they would like <laughs> or throw it to other videos we have. Look at this one. Thanks for joining us for Hot News Gaming.